Uh, so let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your loving kindness, and your grace. God, we ask you to be in our midst today. We ask you, Lord, to anoint every word that exit these lips. Speak, Lord, have your way, your word. Come forth, Lord God, uh, with power and might. Give, Lord God, ears to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Anoint us, Lord God. Break yokes, destroy yokes, Lord God, and deliver in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Those of, uh, that are visiting us or joining us via social media, go ahead and share this uh, with others. Invite your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers. Remember to call your family on in because worship should always be a family affair. So we're going to go ahead and start uh, into the word of the Lord today. St. John chapter uh, 4 is where we're going to uh, deal with, and we're going to hop, skip, and jump through the scripture. I may not personally hop, skip, and jump, but <laughs> we're going we're to hop, skip, and jump through the scriptures as we read today. Um, and so if you will go with us here uh, to the word of the Lord, and hopefully you have your Bibles today because... Uh, uh, we're not utilizing technology as in uh, placing this, the scripture on the screen. We're going to start with verse number four. Uh, so St. John chapter four, verse number four says, It was necessary for him to go through Samaria. It was necessary for him to go through Samaria. Now we're, we're going to start there. Um, our topic simply uh, today is, is simply that it was necessary. Uh, it was necessary. Now, if you understand, I am extracting these verses today from a very familiar story about the woman of Samaria, the woman at the well. And I want us to walk through this and I want us to clearly understand what's happening in this situation. So Jesus is on his way uh, to return to Galilee. And in the process of wanting to return to Galilee, leaving Judea, he then says in verse 4, it was necessary for him to go through Samaria. Now understand him being a Jew and those who are following him are of the Jewish descent uh, was not supposed to have interaction with the Samaritans. They were considered outcast people. They were not part of the inner circle of Jesus Christ. Uh, they were not supposed to be intermingled with uh, by the Jewish culture, the Jewish people, because of their mixed breed, because of their way of thinking, because of their way of living, uh, Jews separated themselves from them. Uh, they would take long routes around Samaria just not to be interacting with them. They, if they had to go through Samaria, they would rush through Samaria. They weren't going to spend the night at the inn in Samaria. They weren't going to spend any time in Samaria. They were going to make sure they rushed through Samaria because this was a place they were not supposed to be in. Traditionally, I want everybody to understand, traditionally, this was the setup, okay? Now, if this was the setup of them not having any dealing with Jewish uh, people, that the Jews should not be in the midst of this city, that Jews should not be intermingling with uh, Samaritans, then why would verse 4 said it was necessary for him to go to Samaria? I want us to understand the fact that how Jesus himself came into this world and broke down traditional habits. I want us to understand that. He came to fulfill the law and he came to break down some of these traditional habits. 
So if you're reading, and I, I, I say this often and, and more so seemingly now because of the time we're living in, when you take the text out of context, then you have a bunch of con and you got a people in these last and evil days extracting text from the context and bringing a bunch of con to the religious world. Well, you, if we put this in context, the context tell us here, and let me read it because I want you to understand that I'm not just making this up. Verse 7 says, Presently, when a woman of Samaria came along to draw water, Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. Now, I, I'm going to pause here to say he initiates the conversation. He knows the law. He knows tradition. He knows what's settled in heaven. He knows what's supposed to be. And yet he initiates the conversation with this Samaritan woman. Now right there I ought to throw up some flags. If Jesus, knowing truth, is truth, fulfilling the law, no right from wrong. First of all, why is he in Samaria? Why are the disciples going to get something to eat? And he stays right there sitting, waiting by the well in Samaria when he knew he shouldn't have even been in Samaria traditionally. And so he sits there and the woman comes up minding her own business minding her own business. Don't run ahead of me. I know you know the kind of woman she is. She's not there with the city women. He, she's not there with the women who seem to be in right standards uh, as far as being married and living, you know, the decent lifestyle. She is one of those, as we would say, fallen women. And so she comes by herself to the well and Jesus initiates a conversation with her breaking all the traditional rules. Breaking all the traditional rules. He said, give me some water. I want you to look at the next verse here. Verse number nine says, the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan, and a woman, and a woman, not only are you asking a Samaritan, but you're asking a Samaritan woman for a drink. For the Jews have nothing to do with the Samaritans. I, I, am I reading from the Bible? And, and I, I listen here. I'm reading from the Amplified, which simply extends the King James Version. I didn't go to the New American Standard or any other. I wanted you to understand that I, because some of you would say, you know, oh, well, see, he's reading one of them other ones. No, right here, King James, Amplified, just extend some of the phrases to make it clear. So she said to him, why are you asking me anything when you as a Jew should have nothing to do with Samaritans at all? And yet you not only ask a Samaritan, but you ask a Samaritan woman, which was surely wrong to do. Now, I need somebody. I need somebody who, who seemed to be greater in the philosophy of Jesus Christ and the more of a deeper theologian than I am explain to me how can Jesus be wrong when everything he does is right. So here she's looking at it like many people in society from one perspective to say, you shouldn't be talking to me. First of all, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. You shouldn't be talking to me. Secondly, I'm a Samaritan woman. So you really shouldn't be talking to me. And then thirdly, she knows her state, her, her spiritual state is outside of the will of God. And so here you got three strikes, Jesus. You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. You're talking to me. 
two. You're a Jewish man and I'm a Samaritan woman and you're talking to me. Thirdly, you're supposed to be holy and I'm a sinner and you're talking to me. Traditionally, you shouldn't be. How many people today still want to hold on to traditions that God himself came down in, in flesh to break up traditions of men? Now, if we rush down to the very uh, end of almost the end of this story, when the disciples returned from getting something to eat, they looked and marveled because they wondered the same thing the woman was wondering. Jesus, you're a Jew. Why are you having a conversation with a Samaritan? Then why are you here, Jesus, alone with this Samaritan woman? And Jesus, she doesn't seem like she's one of us as in part of the church. Why are you talking to her, Jesus? Now, they marveled, but they didn't say anything. Because, first of all, they were in training. And Jesus was teaching them something. He's breaking traditional walls at this point in time. But he says it was necessary for me to go here. Can I tell you, we're in 2020. Holiness is still right. That is not going to change. His word is already settled in heaven. But what we have to understand is this. When Jesus came and lived among us, dwelled among us, was the example of true holiness among us, and gave us his word, we have to realize the difference between tradition of men and Holy Scripture teaching. Right. Now you're going to find traditions of men in God's word. That's why we talk about rightly dividing his word. What was given as an example, what was given as Holy Scripture for us to obey. There is a difference. God gives us some things in his word to tell us how men were, how they should be, what we shouldn't do, what we should do, and he refers to some of the things of the times. We say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I agree with that factor. Now, I want to break that down real quickly, if I may. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, and he dealt with situational time frames, political situations, community and environmental situations of that time, don't you think he's doing the same thing now if he's the same God? So there are some scriptures and which he put in the Bible telling us about a time frame. Let me put it this way. Sometimes people of all ages getting ready to tell a particular story about what has happened referenced it based on what was going on in society at that time. So some would say, uh, you remember it was around the time when uh, President Kennedy got shot. They may not know the exact year, but they say they reference you to the time frame. Do you remember? It was the time frame, you know, uh, you know, it was when uh, we were all headed uh, to, to, to Chili's. Oh, yeah. It gives references based on the time frame. So there are some things in God's word that he talks about or that is spoken about that simply gives men who translated the Bible a time frame for what was happening in that time. Because let me tell you this, I don't care how old you are right now, none of us was there during Jesus' time. None of us was walking around when David was walking around. 
None of us was there when Moses was walking around. Neither of us, and you may have traveled to the Red Sea and seen it now, but you weren't there when the Israelites crossed over on dry land. Okay, how old you look or feel, you weren't there. So when the Bible gives us situations, it gives us various events to tell us this is when it was happening. To calendate where it was. So sometimes he deals with, he gives us scriptures to deal with what was happening at that time. Now I'm going to take my pen out and bust some balloons. Some of the scriptures were, are not for us to fulfill in 2020. Right. See, y'all got quiet. I wish I would stop fighting against truth because you hear those of, 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 that, that are not in God whispering evil words in your mind. There are some scriptures that it doesn't apply to us. You say, what it is, all the scriptures for us. Oh, they are? That I want to know where are you hiding your turtle doves and your pigeons, your lambs, your goats, your, your bullocks. Because this is the, basically the first day of the week and you came into the house of God. Where is it? If the scriptures all apply to us for what we should be doing in 2020, I want to see, I, I need some bullocks and turtle doves and pigeons. For your, for your sins. Where are they? So all scriptures were given for the, uh, for the, by the inspiration of God and all for our learning, but they're not all for us to obey today. Oh, let me give you another one because I don't want you to think I'm just blowing smoke. In days of old, if the husband sinned, messed up, the whole house was in sin. So guess what? Some of you would never be saved. If, if the husband died, then his older brother was supposed to move on in. Now, come on, somebody. Now, you might have married him, but the brother, you didn't want. But come on now, if we're in Bible, if we're in the Bible and every verse still attained to us in 2020, some of y'all better go find your, your brother-in-law. And gone and marry him. Somebody go with me now. If we're following every verse of the Bible today, that's what it was then. But that's not what it is now. So traditionally, he was not supposed to be in Samaria, nor were his disciples supposed to be in Samaria, nor was he supposed to be talking to this Samaritan woman, nor was he should be talking to this Samaritan sinner woman, right. traditionally. Right. But it was necessary. It was necessary. Why was it necessary? Because he had to break down traditional walls. And bring others in. Can we read a little further? Let's read a little further. So he, she tells him, you shouldn't have been talking to me. You, you, you shouldn't have nothing to do with me. Jesus answered her, if you had only known and had recognized God's gift and who this is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him instead and he would have given you living water. You should have been talking to me. Now that's what, that's what the Bible says. You should have been talking to me. You should have been asking me for some water if you would have known who I was. Now understand here, she could identify he was a Jew. 
his appearance gave him away. But he said, if you've known who I was, who I, uh, beyond me being a Jew, if you really known who I was, you'd been asking me for some water. And I would have given it to you. Then this really baffled her mind. How are you going to give me some water you ain't got nothing to draw with? Again, she's looking on the surface of what have been what has, what has been in the past, she's looking on the fact that the only way you're going to get water out of this well is have something to draw with. And you don't have anything to draw with. How many of you are still looking at scriptures on the surface and not looking inside of the scripture to realize whether it is simply for learning purposes, whether it is something to be applied today, or to look at the depths of it and your research of Scripture. Because listen here, when the Bible says study to show thyself approval, let me, let me help you out here. You open your Bible and you read a verse. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God beside, abides on him. All right, I did my studying. No, you read. You've studied absolutely nothing. I read my Bible every day, but you hadn't studied because you haven't broken down that one verse. See, it's not that I got to study a whole chapter every day. Oh, I have to go deep into some big, long, uh, several verses. It's going to take me a while to decipher and break down this one verse. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. Well, I got to understand what you're talking about believes, because Satan believes. Does he have eternal life? What does eternal mean? What does eternal life mean? Then, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life. And what do you mean you don't see life? Am I going to die right now? I'm going blind? What does that really mean? The wrath of God abides on him. What? What is wrath? I hope I'm making myself clear. Studying the word and reading the word are way two different things. And the Bible says study to show thyself approved. And you got a bunch of people who are reading and try to handle God's word and want to try to tell you you're wrong. Now, I've been talked about. You have too. I've been talked about because I, I have multiple degrees as if that's a bad thing. I've been talked about because of my profession, because I teach for a profession. I've been talked about as if that's a bad thing. It's been thrown up in my face because I teach. Now, there's a fleshly part of me that has some words for those kind of people, and I don't even have to cuss them out. The first word starts with an N. That's what I want to start with. Please. Ain't my fault you dumb. Ain't my fault you chose some other profession. It's not my choice. It's not my fault. You went some other route. That's not my fault. But you want to throw it up because you think I ought to stumble through the scripture like you stumbled through. I'm sorry, I'm not going to dumb down myself because you're not there. So I'm a studier. We are in conversations on the job or in various other uh, environments, and people start talking about the genres that they like to read. As a reading teacher, you would think, I just love reading all different kinds of genres. I don't. But I really get deep down into when I start researching. I like researching because I want to make sure I'm right. I want to make sure that I really understand. And I like biblical research. Oh, call me what you want to call me. I just like biblical research. Now, you want me to research, you know, the city of Dallas. 
I may not have that great of interest. But I do, I love doing biblical research because I want to truly understand his word and I really want to make sure I, what I'm saying is right. I can't study with just a Bible. I got to have a dictionary. I need some uh, uh, commentaries. I need various versions because I need to see how this is broken up because I don't want a one eye perspective because then in my position I got to feed the flock now I don't know about you I don't want to eat the same meal every day and then if you're going to give me chicken can you fix it in different ways then you can you add some size now y'all know I'm a meat person now I don't like vegetable plates but I'll eat vegetables with my meat Okay? You know, you, you, can, you got to figure it out. So I want some meat. Just getting up here, mmm, ha, ha, whoa, ha, ha, and cornbread. Ha, ha. I don't do me a thing. That, that ain't working for me. Nor does it work for me when you stumble through, uh, uh, G, uh, G, G, G's wept, and that, uh, that, that meant he cried. And that didn't work for me either. I'm like the children in my class. I tune you out. So when I study, I want a breakdown of what the word of God said. And then I need to know what was happening. Because I want to know, listen here. Deacon, I'm not trying to live on the edge. But if I don't have to uh, nail a nail in my hand, I don't want to. So I want to know, is the nail supposed to go through my hand? I need to know that. Because that's going to be painful. So I want to understand, why is the nail going through the hand? Oh, that's for Jesus. Oh, okay, good. I don't have to do that. So when I look at scripture, I want to know, is it what I need to do? Is this necessary for holiness, for righteous living, or is it not? So they're having this conversation, this Samaritan woman and Jesus, and he's breaking all the rules. But he says it was necessary. So they're talking about getting some water. But how many people know they're using the same word water, but they're talking about two different kinds of water? Give me some water. You should be asking me anything. If you knew who I was, you'd be asking me for a drink. You ain't got nothing to draw with. He's not talking about that water. See, that's what gets people confused. They sometimes read scripture, but they don't study scripture. And so when they see a word, they just take it at face value. But in God's word, it doesn't always mean what it means in 2020. First of all, you have to understand that the Bible was not written in English. So when it was translated from various Languages, all languages don't have the same words. So they impute it. They put in certain words to closely relate to what they were talking about. I'm not trying to insult anybody by intelligence. I know most of you may know that already. I just want to stir up your pure mind. So the translation changes. Listen, we can even go from Spanish to English. Their alphabet is different than our alphabet. Sometimes you've talked to someone who, who's speaking, uh, trying to speak English to you, who are, their first language is Spanish, and they're struggling not because they're illiterate, they're struggling because they're trying to figure out what word they can use to go with what they're trying to say because there's not that, that word is not in their language. I hope I'm making sense. So since it's not in their language, they got to come up with something that is closely related to what you are talking about. Can I just, let me, let me make it simple, very simple for you. Those who like golden girls, you know, Rose use all those uh, words, those Scandinavian words. And so sometimes they have to say, what do you mean? And she says, 
closely translated, it means. I, I won't hope I'm making sense. So when it comes from Arabic, Hebrew, Greek, and they had to translate it into English, some of it was closely translated. That's why you have the debate in some when you're over in Genesis 1. He or they? How is it used? Oh, that meant that there was more than one God. No, that means there's only one God. So closely translated is all that we have. So they're talking about two different types of water here. His purpose for going through Samaria was not to get the water from, David's, from Jacob's well. He could have gotten water anywhere else. And the fact, the fact that he was Jesus, he could have called water out of a tree, out of a rock. He really didn't need water from a well. But he wanted to break down some tradition, and he was talking to this woman about redemption. Not about Jacob's well. And so they go through this whole conversation back and forth, and he's, you know, he's talking, and he's talking, and she's talking, and in verse 19, she said, let me, let me back up. I don't, don't take you too far too quickly. The woman says in verse 15, says, the woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may never get thirsty nor have to come continually all the way here to draw. She is still in a different book in the W's. She's talking about water from her book and he's still talking about water from his book. We've said many times, you know, we all want to be on the same page. But in these last and even days, not only do we need to be on the same page, we need to be on the same page in the same book. Because they're both talking about water. But she said, give me. I'm, I'm willing now. I'm open to receive this water you've been talking about to me. Give me this water so I'll never have to come here and draw again. Because I don't want to be dealing with them, 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 them mean women. I don't want to be dealing with them trifling women. I don't want to be dealing with the women whose husbands I've stolen. I don't want to have to come here and deal with this mess and drama. So give me the water, Jesus, so I don't have to come here again. Now, Jesus has convinced her that she needed his water. The issue is she is still seeing it from the wrong perspective. I know that I'm not being done. Make sure you really understand what he's saying. So verse 16 says, Jesus said unto her, go call your husband and come back here. He didn't say to her, I'm not going to give it to you. He didn't even correct her to say, this is not the water I'm talking about. He says to her, because he's still trying to break down barriers and he's still trying to get a clear explanation over to her. He's still trying to rightly divide the word for her. So he says to her, go get your husband and then come back. Now some of us say, well, why didn't he just explain to her she was wrong? That's the problem in today's society. So many people want to quick to tell somebody they're wrong and not figure out where they are a little off kilter to meet them there to help them out. So he said, go get your husband and come back here. Verse 17 says, the woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have spoken truly in saying I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. And the man you are now living with, this is number six, for those who, you know, have lost the numbers here. And the man you are now living with is not your husband. In this, you have spoken truly. 
Oh, you telling the truth now, woman. Yes. You done had five, five husbands before, and the man you're with now ain't your husband. That you're living with. So let's backtrack. Let's backtrack some because I don't want to lose nobody. Jesus is in a place traditionally he wasn't supposed to be. Jesus is talking to someone he shouldn't be talking to traditionally because she was a Samaritan and he was a woman. Jesus already knew this was a sinner woman. Just like she knew he was a Jew, he knew she was in sin. There was no doubt. And yet, it was necessary for him to initiate the conversation. Oh, I wish you, I, when I say you, I don't mean just you sitting here, uh, you that's there, whoever this fit. I wish we as, uh, as Christians, as Christians, would open up our minds and understand that the purpose of Jesus Christ is to save souls. His purpose is not to see us shout and run around and scream and yell. That's not his purpose for coming. His purpose is to seek and save the lost. Now, somebody has to help me out because I know I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I'm surely not the dumbest. And I tend to believe I lean closer over to the smarter than to the dumber. How can we help somebody be saved and we just isolate them? We don't let them come around. We don't talk with them. We almost want to stone them because they're living in sin. We're just so holy and pure that we can't love them to Christ. Somebody has to help me. How is that God's way? And you say, oh, Bishop is wrong because he's allowing folks to walk up in God's house this way, that way, the other way. What am I supposed to do? Did you, did you recall whose house you said it was? It was God's house. Now, you can't walk up into my house smoking. And no, you can't walk up in God's house smoking. You can't walk up in my house cussing at me. I have more control of what goes on in my house. Now, God has placed me to stand on the wall to direct what happens in his house. But he's in control. He said in his word, let the wheat and the tear grow together. He's going to separate them. Now, if he's going to separate them, why am I in, trying to get in his way, Sister Radcliffe, and do the separating now? He said in his word, now correct me if I'm wrong now, in his word, whosoever will, let them come. It's necessary for us to have the doors open and to let them come. I'm supposed to stop them because they think differently than I think. Or they look differently than I look. Or they believe differently than I believe. There were three people at a church service in the Bible. And one man got up to speak, Apollo. Anybody remember that? And there was a couple sitting in the audience when he got up to speak. And after he had gotten up through speaking, they pulled him over to the side and expounded the word of God to him more clearly. They didn't cast him out. They didn't sit him down. They didn't bash him. They wanted him to make sure that he had the other part of the story. This woman, if you read through this story, starts telling Jesus about worshiping. Now, how are you going to tell Jesus about worshiping and Jesus knows about worship? But she tells him about her understanding of worship. She tells him about the well because she said to you, wait a minute, uh, Jacob, 
My father gave us this well. Are you greater than he? We supposed to worship over here. This is how we supposed to do. And he goes in and says, listen here, there's more to it than just what you know. So he tells her, I know you're a sinner. I know you got these, these men. You had these men. I understand this. She says to him, she says to him, says, the woman said unto him, and I'm at verse 19 for those who found The woman says to him, sir, I see and understand that you are a prophet. I can tell you must be a prophet because you knew this and I didn't tell you this. And they go on a little further in their conversation and they start talking about worship and she tells him, I know that the Messiah is going to come and I know when the Messiah come that this and that is going to happen. And he says, listen here, I am him. His whole purpose for going to Samaria was to break down traditionalism and to help her identify that the Messiah is here. Because guess what? The Samaritans needed to know that. She drops her bucket and she runs back to the city and tell the men, come see a man that have told me everything. Isn't this him? And here they come. Now understand this. <laughs> I get myself in so much trouble just telling truth. But the Bible said he can't stand a liar. A liar can't tear in his eyesight. And I want to be in his eyesight. But I get so, in so much trouble telling truth. This woman who've already had five husbands on her sixth man is able to persuade a group of men to follow her to Jesus. Don't get quiet. I didn't leave the Bible. That's what the Bible says. She went and she didn't go to the sisters. Sister Hell, she didn't run to the women. Where are they all sewing and cooking? Come on, ladies. No. She went back to the group of men to say, come see a man that has told me everything I've done. And the Bible says these men who's the head of, you know, they're the head, they're the top, they're the one in charge. These men went running after this woman to Jesus. She didn't say, come to my house and let's party. She didn't say, she didn't raise up her, her robe to say, hey, see, she said, come see a man that have told me everything about, me. isn't this the Messiah? And they ran to see the Messiah based on what this woman told them. You didn't think Jesus knew they were going to come? It was necessary for him to be there. He's sitting, chilling, waiting on them to show up to break down tradition. Because the gospel has to be preached to every nation. How are you going to send a whole nation to hell and they ain't never heard this, the gospel? They have to hear the gospel to reject the gospel. Can I put it this way? Some of us reject things we ain't know nothing about. Parents cook something. Somebody to offer you something. Well, taste this. Ooh, what's that? I don't like that. How do you know you don't like it? I can't tell you how many times, many times, many times, many times people tell me that. But how do you know you don't like it? Because I'm one of those. I don't, mm, mm, mm. See, I tell them, I say, mm, what's that? My sister-in-law would, you know, be uh, around folks of other nations, nationalities on her job. And she's, oh, she's raving over some food and we gathering. And she's going to come to me, huh, taste this. What is that? It's good. Girl. <laughs> it had nothing to do with her. <laughs> it, did, it wasn't that I didn't trust her. I, what is that? And this is me. And then the next thing I want to do is smell it. What you smelling it for? Because I want to see how it smells. If it don't smell right, I ain't tasting it. 
taste it, taste it. Listen here. <laughs> Listen. It doesn't work when, when, when Laisha does it. <laughs> It'll work with other people. I, I, I cook it differently. Listen, I don't care how you cook it. it, it it's good. It just doesn't look right. And if it doesn't look right, it doesn't smell right, in my mind, it ain't going to taste right. Where did I say it? In my mind. So guess what? I'll never know because it ain't going to go to my lips. And they tell me, you're missing out. Okay, well, you know, I've been missing out on thinness for a while now. But I'm surviving. Some things I'm just not going to taste. I'm not just going to dip into it because somebody said it tastes good. Some of you, I know you may not admit it openly now and then that we're on Facebook. Some of you at home can admit it because nobody's there with you. Some of you will eat coon, squirrel, possum, chitlins, neck bones, pig feet, pig ears. If you're bringing it to my house, it must be for you because I ain't eat none of that. Butter beans. I'm not eating them. Child, the way I cook them. You know what? You may be right. But guess what? I, I won't know. I won't know if they're any different because guess what I'm not going to do? Eat them. I grew up. I grew up in Alice May's house where she cooked a variety of that stuff. And remember, I'm the number 11. I'm the youngest. So some of the older ones ate that. Mm -mm, children, they could eat too. Mm -mm, mm -mm, okay. And I'm still picky. I'll try a little bit. Say, so, well, how did you get the size you are? Because what I did, like I ate. Don't play with me. And since I couldn't eat all this other, I doubled up on this. You know how sometimes you go to the store and say, give me double fries because I didn't want. <laughs> Keep the coleslaw. I mean, let's just be real. So I just didn't taste everything. And at the age I am now, some things I eat now that I did eat. And still there are some things I'm not going to eat. I don't know if you call him nephew-in-law or just nephew. But Rosney's husband cooked different foods. He'd bring them to the gatherings. They have different smells. And, and I, think they have, I think they have different tastes. And you have many of them raving about it. Ooh, ooh, it's so good. And I do the same thing. I'm consistent on some things. <laughs> Uncle, you're going to eat? <laughs> what is this, Casey? What? You got to taste it. <laughs> some things just doesn't work. So for you to grasp, grab a hold of something, you have to have some belief in it. So here's this woman leading these men to come see a man she believes is the Messiah. And they show up and he talks to them and they believe in him being the Messiah. That's why it was necessary for him to get there. Now, what's going on today? Today is people are trying all different kinds of things, and they're trying to get other people to try some of those same things. But if it's not lining up with this rightly divided, leave it alone because it stinks. It ain't going to taste good. Oh, well, let me rephrase it. It may taste all right to you, but it ain't going to fit well with you later on. I'm going to go into deepness. And I'm got to scatter through here on the surface so that y'all don't get too. 
some things you take in, you become MIA for the next 30, 45 minutes or so. Because it takes you into a private room. Go with me now. Someone is asking, where are you? Child, they are. And you're in a private room resting. Did you follow me? Oh, you took it in. But it didn't work with your digestive system well. And where your arthritic knees thought they couldn't run, you find yourself getting there much quicker and staying there much longer because it didn't work with your system. What am I saying? Stop taking in everything because everything don't work with your system. It is necessary to truly look at the scripture deeper than just the surface. It is necessary to understand what God is truly saying and what he means for today's society. I've done research and I'm bringing it to a close. I've done research before, numerous times before, but I was doing more research um, in preparation today because I, I just, I keep saying, I don't want to be wrong. I don't care what your thoughts are about me. I don't care how you see me. I'm telling you from my own self, I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to die and go to hell. If I'm supposed to wear a turban on my head to be saved, I got to find some turbans. I don't like them. But if that's what I have to do to be saved, I'm going to put on a turban and I'm going to start telling all of wear turbans. So I've had to go through and I went back again and I'm opening up scripture and I'm opening up books and I'm praying and meditating, trying to figure out, am I off? And my teachings, am I off base? Because see, there's a difference between scripture and preferences. And a lot of things that have been taught in churches have been preferences and not scripture. Although they've pulled out verses to justify preferences. And I, you know, I'll tell you in a minute, this is my preference compared to this is scripture. So I want to make sure I'm dealing with scripture, not preferences. And when I look at scripture, I believe I'm on track based on scripture. Your preference may be something different, but scripturally, I believe I'm on target. The old time debate in, in churches is women in pants. You can't just pull one verse out and be gone. You got to read through. And when reading through the process and you go through the verses and you don't just take that one out first, you have to look at what was happening. Then secondly, you got to look at the context of it. And then I kept reading and I keep reading it over and over again. And I try, you know, and I, I, I reach over to this verse to tie me in to make sure. If we're going to abide by that, then you got to look at what the clothing materials and outfits were then and you got to see what the scripture says and you got to see what history says and what facts says and when I keep reading it says here's the men's attire the women's were similar to the men the difference were boom boom okay but then when you tie that scripture in to the other scripture about modesty, then I thought about some of you that may not like, you know, women in pants. And that's your preference. It's okay. I'm not saying you have to be in them. I'm not saying it's a sin to be in them based on scripture. But the scripture does say if you're going to take it simply by surface, you can't wear expensive clothes. See, that's what it says in Timothy. You can't wear expensive clothing. You can't wear gold. You can't wear things that are shiny. You can't wear things that are going to make you, you know, 
look all fancy. You can't wear that based on surface scripture understanding. Now that's what the scripture says in Timothy. I'm like, uh, look it up. I dug deep. I want you can't wear that and be saved. You're saved and you're helped and you're blessed through childbearing. Oh, ain't born no children? Guess you're not blessed. I'm basing on scripture. You got any gold or sparkly on your clothing? You're in sin. If you're wearing expensive outfits, you're in sin. If you're going by surface scripture only, don't listen here, don't question me deeply because I've already dug it. Because I had to look and scratch my head. So you say, What? What? Huh? I said, All these sisters who don't want something from the backside of the thrift store in order to be cheap and simple. All these that got to have some little, what do they call, uh, bedazzle on their clothing, sequences, sparkles. All of them are going to hell if we go with surface words. Because you can't pick one without the, can't have one without the other. I'm trying to help you be right. So, if you're going to look at scripture, look at it deeply. It is necessary to be able to break it down. And I believe what the Bible says, he gives you pastors to teach you, to feed you. And why would I feed you something false? I do know there are ministers of the devil who try to magnify themselves as angels of light. Listen, I take off all my honor and show you I am who I am. If God himself did not call me to qualify me to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, as much stuff as I've been through, do you think I would stay in this? I wouldn't. Because I believe if, if, if he didn't call me, I could be saved sitting right there in the pew. Because up here, then I'm in, I give an account for your soul. I have to watch for your soul. And, and then I have to make sure that I, every word I speak, I give an account for. So it's easier for me to just sit down in the pew and just say, amen. Then to stand up here and teach and preach. So if I didn't think this is where I'm supposed to be, I'd be sitting out in the pew. But you have to go deeper and you have to figure out water for her and water for him was two different things. And they were saying the same word. It is necessary for you to truly understand what God is saying. Truly understand what the scripture is saying. And then understand he came to break down walls of partition and break down traditionalism. And if you know anything about Jesus in his life, and I got to quit, anything about him over and over again, the Pharisees and Sadducees, these religious sect, kept trying to trip him up and ask him questions about the law and try to get him all tangled up and have him to say something that's going to go against. And they kept trying. It was the religious people that kept fighting against what he came to stand for and what he came to prove this. And then if in our studies... In our studies in Colossians, and if you didn't join us Wednesday, join us. In our studies, and when you look, there's a part that talks about, uh, Peter, uh, 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 Paul talks about the fact how he is here to unveil the mystery that has already been set. See, there are some people who thought Gentiles was an afterthought of God. And Gentiles, that's who we are, were not God's afterthought. It was already in his plan. But when the time, when the fullness of time was come, he ushered us in. 
you got to understand you're not an afterthought. He was already, you already was in God's plan. But if you don't understand the depths of the scripture, you think we're teaching something different. It is necessary to study God's word. It's necessary to understand. Jesus came to fulfill the law and to prove to men, especially the religious world, that what if you were doing wasn't working. The law could not save. Do, do, do we all understand that? The law could not save. Although they were trying to keep the law, it could not save. So he had to come to bring the plan of salvation that would. Brothers and sisters everywhere, Understand we're in the very last days. Perilous times are here. We must hold fast to truth. And understand this. Bishop said it, I'm seeing it. And I know, I've noticed, I told Lady E, I said, you know what? Sometimes it really gets discouraging. I was in another conference. I said, it really gets discouraging. Sometimes I'm on the Sunday school call. Sometimes I'm listening to other people talk. And they, they said, oh, and Bishop, uh, Bishop Hinton said this, and Elder Christian said that, and Bishop Hinton said this, and Elder Christian said that. And I said, but I ain't said nothing. I ain't said nothing. I ain't said nothing. Come never remember what Bishop Edwards said, Bishop Hinton said, and Elder Christian said. Elder McCracken ain't said nothing. I don't know if anybody was here then. None of the other elders said anything. But Bishop Edwards ain't said nothing for me to repeat. Boy, that sure can be a ego blaster. I just, I ain't said a word. I ain't said nothing about love Jesus or nothing to reference. I said, you know, okay. That's why David said, encourage yourself, Jesus. I want to be right in God. What I teach and preach, I want it to be right according to God's word. I want to rightly divide it. I want to teach and preach you the truth of God's word. And I want you to grow into the truth and the knowledge of God. I want you to grow and be mature in God. I'm not trying to go to hell, and I'm not trying to lead anybody else to hell. It is necessary for us to come reason together. If there's something you don't understand, come reason together. Come, let's figure out what's tradition and what's scripture. And listen, when the Lord reveals to you as you walk with him and you walk in more light and you understand this is what just been taught, but this ain't what scripture really says, then you walk in the light. As he's in the light. So it's necessary. Am I angry at anybody? No, I'm not angry. I just want us to be saved. I just want us to be right in God's eyesight. I want us to hold fast to truth. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, you need to be. If you hadn't repented of your sins, you need to be. If you hadn't been filled with his Holy Spirit, you need to be. That is not changing. I believe that and will believe that to the very deathbed. I believe the Bible says, be ye holy for I'm holy. I don't believe anybody can live in sin and in holiness at the same time. I don't believe you can walk like this. You are either going to be on one side or the other. I don't care who it is. I don't believe you can shack up and be saved. I don't believe you can fornicate and be saved. I don't think you can drink, smoke, cuss, lie, and cheat and be saved. I don't think you can rob God through tithes and offering and be saved. I don't think you can go around dressed up like a man in men clothing and be saved. I don't think some man can go around in women clothing and be saved. I don't think women can usurp authority over men, which is take by force. I don't think domineering women can be saved. So you at home with your husband, but you want to control him. He got to, every time you speak, I don't think you can be saved. 
because I find all that in the scripture. Busy body in other men's affairs. I don't think you could be saved. I believe holiness is right. I'm not changed from that. But I do believe the Bible said, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. I don't believe God has put me up here to judge everybody who lives in this world. I don't think I'm supposed to be bashing everybody or anybody. The Lord didn't tell me to chop folks' heads off. I don't believe that. So in order to do God's perfect will, it is necessary I do it the Bible way. So what if some don't believe? Does it make God's word none effect? I have to stand on God's word. It is necessary, even in 2020, to stand on God's word. Now, am I going to tell you every time I see you, and I know you fornicating, stop fornicating, stop fornicating, stop fornicating. No, you know you should not be fornicating. You know you shouldn't be smoking and drinking. You know. Why am I going to tell you that every time I see you? Tell the lie. Stop lying, stop lying, stop lying. I'm he didn't tell me to say that every time I see you. He told me to preach the gospel. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. So all of you hellfire and brimstone people, where are your family that you done talked to at home with hellfire and brimstone? Where are they? In them saved? Ask you the one, same thing with Jesus asked the one, where's your husband? Did hellfire and brimstone help you? Because it took you a while before you decided, and it wasn't the hellfire and brimstone, it was the love of Jesus Christ and understanding his word. He never said, with hellfire and brimstone, do I draw thee? So why do you want me to be out of the will of God? But that's how they preached it when I came in. They also put people on blast when you came in. Called out their name and had them to stand up in front of everybody and said, this person's sinning. Today, you want to stone a preacher if they even reference your sin. They didn't look in your direction. They didn't call your name. They reference your sin. I ain't going to that church. I'm be mad. Well, how are we supposed to call them out? <laughs> it is necessary for us to stay with the right and divided word. It is necessary for us to live holy. It is not time for us to backtrack, backslide, go a different way. It is time for us to stay with God because the end is near. Amen? All right, put your hands together. Give God a praise. We're stopping there. We want to pray for everyone. Those that are here, those that are joining us via social media, uh, those that are on the verge of whatever they're on, we want to pray for everyone. Gracious God, our Father, thank you. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for the necessity of coming by us wherever we may be, whether we're at Samaria, at the well, or whether we're in Jerusalem, wherever we may be, Lord God, in our lives. Thank you for stopping by and talking with us today, helping us to understand the difference between your word of truth for salvation and breaking down of traditional walls. God, we want to thank you. We come to you on behalf of every individual that heard your word today and that will hear this word. God, that you will speak to their hearts and their mind, that you will open up their understanding to understand what your word is saying. Save us all to the utmost. Keep us, God, in your perfect will. Bring us to where we need to be, God. And in any area, God, that we may not have a clarity in, open up our understanding and give us a clear understanding, God, of your rightly divided word. Save, deliver, and set free. Save our families, our friends. Save our co-workers. Save our employers, Lord God, our employees. Save, Lord, within the nation. But most importantly, Lord, make sure we're saved. Make sure we're saved. 
Help us to be the light that we need to be. Help us to stick with your word of truth. Touch and heal, Lord God, in this place, via social media, wherever they may be, wherever healing is necessary, heal the body, the mind, the spirit, the finances, heal and deliver. And Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, God, we love you. And the church said amen. All righty. Thank you once again for joining us. We are so appreciative for your presence. Social media here in person. Thank you so very much. We're going to call Lady E to come up with our announcements. Help us out. Uh, uh, let us know what's going on uh, in and around the wells. And then understand while we're getting ready to do announcements, while we are importing to you announcements, remember uh, you can call 469-552-8300 and give your offering electronically. You can go to our website, thewellsdallas.com, click on the Give tab and give through PayPal. If you're in Dazelle, go to the wells1827 at gmail.com and give your contribution, your donation, your offering, your tithing uh, via Zelle. Uh, you can mail it in, make your check of money or payable to the Wells Ministry of Dallas, W-E-L-L-S, and send it in to P.O. Box 1033, DeSoto, Texas, 75123. And as I stated earlier, if you're not giving tithing off of your gross and you're not giving a love offering, the Bible says you're robbing God. And you cannot be saved robbing God or robbing 7-Eleven or robbing Walmart or whatever. But you surely can't be saved robbing God. I don't care how tight it is. The money's tight. You give God his part off the top. If you want to be blessed, you give his part to him off the top. That's your tenth off of your gross. Now, I don't care if it's through disability, social uh, security, if it's through a job, if it's through... Uh, uh, parental support you give the tenth off your gross and you give a free will offering in order to be in alignment with God and you don't have to wait until you save to do that that is just the principle of God that you're supposed to do amen all right lady E why are you doing that let's why is she doing that we want to uh, we know the first week we gave away the cash it went to Sister Bruner. Remember, all you have to do is three points from the uh, sermons. Text it in to 469-552-8300. We draw a name, and if you're the one, you win cash. So the first week, it was Sister Bruner. Last week, she was home and is home, so it's even those uh, social media. It was Sister Leal who won last week. This week's winner of our cash for giving, for anticipating, for participating and, and, and paying attention and sending in their three points, this week's cash go to Sister Amanda. Woo! It's real cash. It's real cash. Just send in your three major points from the sermon. Send it in to 469-552-8300 and your turn could come around. Woo! Catch it before we stop because <laughs> we're getting into Thanksgiving and Christmas season. I can't keep giving out uh, y'all some cash and, 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 and still be ready for the holidays. So <laughs> since it's coming out of my pocket, just keep, just keep paying attention to the word of God. Amen? Amen. All right. Go ahead. Praise the Lord, everyone. We are so grateful that you all have joined us today in person and via social media. Um, just a few things that are going on in and around the wells. Please, uh, first and foremost, remember that on Wednesday, on Wednesday, 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 <coughs> Bishop Hinton, our senior pastor, turns 94 years old. And so we will definitely be celebrating him He's looking forward to your calls, your love, your show of support uh, on that day because it's not a lot of people that we know in our lives that have made it that far.
So there are some people that didn't make 49, let alone 94. Amen. All right. So Amen. let's let's celebrate him that day. Of course, you know, we can't go visit and all that great stuff because of, you know, COVID. But there's definitely a way you can drive by, drop off a gift on the sidewalk. You know, call him, you know, call the bishop outside. I want to drop off a gift. They'll come outside to the sidewalk, meet you, meet you halfway while you headed back to the car. And they'll, they'll wave at you and all that great stuff. Uh, but please show your love and support to him. Um, as well as Lady Hinton, just just by calling and letting them know constantly that you're on, they're on your mind and that you love them. So they're still part of the church. Yep. His, because he's at 93 right now with, with two broken two hips, replaced, re hip. replaced uh -huh. hips, uh -huh. and, and the age and the arthritis, arthritis and the underlying condition and uh -huh. the COVID numbers are high. Uh -huh. Don't mean he left the church. It just means for safety purposes, he's inside. Bishop says, I don't want nobody at my house, and I don't want to go to nobody's house. I'm staying in the house. Oh. I'll go to my back porch, and that's about all. Uh -oh. Because he says, I don't want that stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. And for his own safe, you're right, Bishop, for his own safety, their, their own underlying conditions, and they're just their age. If they were in perfect health, their age makes them so susceptible. Little kids even are more susceptible because of their ages. So yeah, they're oh. still a part of the church. Oh, okay. Okay. Just want to clear Forever that up. And always. For any false doctrines that may be going oh, on. Oh, well, no. They, oh, okay. They are still me. I don't I, see them. I don't I see them. I have got a resignation letter or anything from them. So I'm oh, assuming, okay. you know, okay. last I talked to them, there we go. And he keeps telling me he's senior pastor. That's so. what he keeps telling <laughs> us. He keeps reminding us, so we know. <laughs> So just make sure that we're, we're celebrating Bishop on his 94th birthday. Also, uh, Thanksgiving, well, Wednesday, Wednesday is still Bible study. So we will be on virtually on Wednesday, uh, still talking from the book of Colossians. Uh, if you didn't get to join us last week and you want to uh, go back and revisit that, please, we're on Facebook. Uh, this time... Uh, for this uh, particular series, and maybe going forward, uh, we'll just have to see how it works. We're on Zoom. So you join in on Zoom, uh, and then you can ask your questions, uh, just like you do in no our normal Bible studies. Mind you, we have to realize that being at the wells is a benefit because normal Bible studies don't do what we do. Normal Bible studies at other churches are not as interactive as ours is. So we are blessed to be able to actually interact during Bible study and now on Zoom we can. So we have brought back some of our comfort zone of what we like to do. So we want you to join us every single Wednesday night, seven o'clock uh, p.m. every Wednesday for Bible study. Don't miss it, okay? And that's central time. Central and if you time. need the Zoom information, text us at 469-552-8300 and we will definitely get that to you. It is the same Zoom number, same Zoom password, uh, but join us on Zoom. Even if you don't ask questions, you can make comments, so you're here and you can see others. Uh, you can interact uh, with us, and then you can also see it on Facebook Live. You can type in the chat. It's just an interactive way, and you know I love interaction in the process. Also, uh, the flyer is out there on our Facebook page as well as other places, and so we'll we'll re rotate that flyer back into the page again later on this week. So the information for Zoom is there. The 26th, we know, is Thanksgiving Day. Uh, Bishop and I, um, and, and and Bishop and Lady Hinton, uh, first of all, want to make sure that you all are taking time not just on Thanksgiving Day to be thankful, but every day of our lives, every every moment that we live, we want to make sure that we're li living in a, a mode of Thanksgiving. We also want to make sure that you're safe. So we're the request is don't gather with your families. We're going by CDC guidelines and their request. The, the, the request is don't gather with your families. They're saying it's not safe. The numbers are going up, and they're going up dr dramatically lately. So have... <laughs> What we're saying now is have virtual Thanksgiving with your families. Every, everybody's got Zoom. You can get Zoom. Everybody can get Zoom. Everybody, and y'all eat together. Y'all still eat together. You can still talk and laugh. You prepare your own meals. This time, if you want to break the tradition and you don't want turkey and dressing, this is the year to do it, y'all. 
long as it's not done at 1222. Long, uh, at 1222, we, we, we're going to we do tradition. A, a tradition. I'm, I, but, that's what I say. But as somebody, I'm the head. <laughs> okay, amen, bless, amen, Bishop. Sorry. The other days may be different, but oh, that's that I day. Stop, I say, stop, I say. <laughs> so, if you want, if this is the year you decided, you know what, we break the tradition. I am tired of turkey and dressing. I've been eating it now for uh 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 years. This year, here's your spot to break the tradition. At your house, eat whatever you're gonna eat. Join your family via Zoom, conference call, Skype, however you all decide to do it. But have, be safe. You don't know where your family's been, you've been out, and what you don't wanna do is, is cross-contaminate and bring those things into someone else's house. It's so dangerous, guys, it's so dangerous. Um, also this week, we will be celebrating the life and legacy of our own um, assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Michael E. Ford, Sr. Um, if you know anything about Bishop Ford, he is, he, he was slick. And you know, to lose a giant in the kingdom like that has really impacted the PCAFI. So starting on the, the 10th, they will, there will be a four-day celebration of Bishop Ford's life. We will be putting that on uh, our page as well as uh, on Group Me for the church so that you'll be able to see that and tune in. Uh, but please be in prayer for that family, for that church family, uh, for Lady Keisha. Please be in, in, in prayer because this is impacted. Be in prayer for Bishop Gates. This was his right hand. Be in prayer for Bishop Gates. Um, because uh, COVID has hit our executive board twice now. So, uh, well, once now. And so, and then we've lost Bishop Mitchell. So uh, just be in prayer because this is really impacting us heavily. And so be in prayer for the PCAFI in general, as well as their church family and his natural family. The PCAFI date, funeral date is the 12th. That Thursday. It is the 12th. So we're asking, the PCAFI is asking you to join in with funeral services on the 12th to celebrate Bishop Ford. And it's that evening. It is that evening. So uh, that way it gives everyone an opportunity to zoom in or to, to be a part of that service. And we are, we are asking you to please take our time to attend that service uh, from, you, from whatever location you're in. Now, on November 21st, the Texas State District Council is hosting our council for November. So our winter council is being hosted this year. We are doing it virtually, okay? You don't have to leave home, you don't have to gather, we just need you to tune in. There will be things going on all day long, so we'll put out that schedule to you and we'll, there will be information going out so just make sure that you're paying attention. We want you to join in. Also, remember IEEE was postponed because of, um, in memory of Bishop Ford, and just to give life and legacy uh, and, and time <coughs> of, of comfort to that family. So watch out for new IEEE dates coming to, um, to our page. We also wanna make sure that it's, it's council time. That means you still need to register. That still means you'll need to make sure that you are on point because we need your full support, okay? We need your full support. So it will be, will be up on Facebook, will be up on Zoom. So just watch out for it and watch for announcements on that. Amen? Amen. Now, it wasn't said, it, it, we stated the fact of Thanksgiving, but traditionally you know here that uh, the Wednesday before we don't have Bible class the Wednesday before and even though things have kind of changed and we're virtually virtually we're not having Bible class on Wednesday either right the, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving because the same things you have to do and for some who hadn't been cooking you got to figure out on Wednesday you how you gonna order. cook what you're gonna cook or where you're gonna order from so we're gonna <laughs> give you a chance to do that uh, that Wednesday amen amen uh, life and death is in the hand of the Lord yes and things are happening rapidly, uh, it is important that you celebrate life and you enjoy life while you live. Love one another and inform one another of your love and your compassion and be there for individuals 
while you have a chance because you never know when that chance will be taken from you. Uh, we're going to uh, try to end with this. Um, and, and some of you, this may mean nothing to. Some of you, it may. Um, those of you who've ever watched Jeopardy and saw the host, Alex Trebek, uh, who have hosted it for so many, many years, passed away this morning. And, and I know some of you kind of, you know, keep up with it. Some of you could care less because some people just, I don't know, why are you telling that in church? It ain't saved because it's a soul. It's a soul. And if you don't have compassion for people, get saved. <laughs> but pray for that family. Uh, it says that he passed away peacefully at home early this morning, surrounded by family and friends. He had uh, been diagnosed with stage four for uh, pancreatic cancer uh, so please keep that in mind get tested prepare yourself protect yourself stay safe amen we love all of you we appreciate all of you as always be blessed be happy be safe wash your hands wear your mask and stay socially distant uh, make sure that you are joining us Wednesday night we love you we appreciate you God bless you is our continual prayer. Remember those that are in the house, remember you will be ushered out one pew at a time uh, because all fellowshipping is done outside of the building. And then if we can get at least four people or so to help us get it done, taken care of, we will be great. Thank you so much. Prayerfully, we'll see you Wednesday night. Continue to also pray for Rance Allen's family who passed away. We found out that wasn't because of COVID. He had a uh, back surgery uh, and he was supposed to have been going home that following week and uh, had some relapse and in the middle of the night transition. So it had nothing to do with COVID. It just, he thought, you know, had some relapse in, in the procedure and that's what took him out. So continue to pray for that family. And they, 